Hey there everybody and welcome to another furniture painting tutorial. My name is Jodie Flavel from Decorous Vintage Designs and today I'm going to be showing you how to get this very kind of romantic old world look and it has a, maybe a little bit of grunge in there too. So it almost looks like an enchanted garden because we've got a lot of detail and we also have lots and lots of shimmer uh, which I love. So to get started, make sure that your piece is thoroughly cleaned. I like to clean my pieces with white lightning or a very good TSP. More often than not, I like to apply a base before I do anything to a piece. Um, I'm not always big on priming, but I guess it's kind of like my priming a little bit. Um, so here I have a mixture of kudzu and... Um, go on, my brain sometimes doesn't work when I'm doing these voiceovers. Uh, kudzu and dried sage, which are both by Dixie Belle, and it's a 50-50 mixture. And I am applying it all over this piece. The brush strokes are kind of all over the place. I'm not too concerned at the moment about brush strokes. I just want to get some really good coverage and I want to make sure that it settles into the grain. Um, I am not worrying about applying water at this point because I want the paint to be quite thick. And I am also painting over the pulls for this piece. I kind of wish I didn't have to paint over the pulls. Sometimes I like to, this time I didn't want to, but for whatever reason, they were kind of like, they've kind of been stuck to the furniture. Like there's, once I opened the drawers, it was just wood. There was no like kind of way, any way to kind of remove them. So that's why I decided to keep them on this piece. All right, so this part was painted live and I just want to give you that warning so you wonder why I'm looking at the camera and chatting away. Um, I do do the occasional lives, um, so I like to kind of just edit these down and incorporate them into these tutorials um, because that way you get still get the information but you just get it much quicker. I'm just showing you here how I mix the kudzu and the dried sage together just to get the colour that I did. Um, for the second base I actually added a little bit more dried sage just to make it a little bit earthier. My second colour is Dixie Belle Palmetto, a 50-50 solution again and mixed with evergreen because I want the kind of richness of the evergreen which is a really bright kind of rich green um, toned down with palmetto but I didn't quite want all of the undertones of the palmetto and I just felt like by mixing them together that was going to kind of create a nice kind of shadow blend which it absolutely did. Um, for this next part of the tutorial as well you are going to want buttercream or any kind of light paint that will suit these greens that you can highlight with. So to get started with, I have the dried sage and kudzu mix again, and I am using a round brush. Um, it doesn't really matter what brush you use for this as such, as long as if you want the smokiness, then you are going to have to have a round brush. It doesn't matter what round brush, as long as it's round. Um, I'm using the Dixie Belle ones and I'm just applying this all over in circular movements. Uh, I also want to work in sections so I'm just doing one draw to start with. I am then getting my Palmetto Evergreen mix and putting this around the edges. This again I'm using circular movements and I'm, I actually have my mini for this just to make sure that I can get into all those edges but then I come in with a clean brush. I like the uh, medium oval brush by Dixie Belle for blending. So it's absolutely clean and I'm just blending this now into the um, original colour. It's also a good idea to get water for this, just a little spritz because it helps it move. I then grabbed my buttercream and I'm starting to apply this in the middle and around the pulls, places that you maybe have been bleached by the sun I, I am going to highlight. If you do these circular movements, um, you want to make sure that you don't over blend, otherwise you will just kind of lose the border of the colours and you will lose the smokiness. I have a really, really bad issue of over blending sometimes and I really have to stop myself. Um, so for this smoky look, just make sure that you kind of leave it a little bit uneven if you want to, um, you know, get that smokiness. You can just add and remove and take away like I am doing here. Like it's not like you just slap it all on there and then it's finished and you can't go back to it. Like just build it up gradually. There's no rush. You can reactivate the paint with water. You can miss the paint with a little bit of water to get it moving easier and to make sure it doesn't dry too quickly. All 
all of the colors as well are um, listed below so all of the products that I use today because I will be using quite a few Dixie Belle products and a lot of redesign with Prima products to get this look as well so don't worry if you get a little bit lost like or you don't quite understand what I'm saying uh, because they're all listed below and you can just use that as a reference as you're watching this video if you want to recreate this look Also, I just want to take this opportunity just to say thank you so much for watching these videos. It does mean a lot to me. Um, I really appreciate all the positive feedback I've got and all of, the, all of the support you guys are giving me. And I just really hope that you are finding these videos useful um, because I love creating them and I love kind of teaching. So if you do like this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a subscribe as well. And I just want, as I say, I just want to say thank you. You know, in regards to this look as well, you can create it in so many different ways. Like I am using a lot of different techniques. You can see here that I am tweaking. You can use, even just using different brushes will change the way it looks. Um, or even if you just try to recreate it exactly as I'm doing, um, you won't ever get the same blend by doing this because it's a very smoky blend. Um, so you, uh, what I love about looks like this is that they can never be recreated twice. Um, because a lot of the time you're kind of just encouraging the paint to kind of just do its own thing and you'll see more of what I mean of that in a little while as I you know after I start layering the paints what I have here now is Dixie Bells in the Navy and you guys probably know right uh, by now how much I love mixing stuff with water so I love mixing my paints with water and this is no um, different so I have mixed it with just a 50 50 solution of water I have then grabbed a cheap chip brush and I am testing a little bit here so I've brushed it onto the furniture and I'm using some crunched up for, um, newspaper to get a very unique pattern. As it stands I didn't really like that look. And that's the brilliant thing about paint, if you don't like the look then you can always change it so there's never any need to stress, never try never to get frustrated because it's just so easy to go back in there and change things. So in this case I grabbed a bit of kitchen towel and I grabbed my water mister and I actually started using a technique that I also love and that this technique is called ragging. The first technique I use with the newspaper, by the way, in case anybody wants to look it up, is called Frottagin, and I can list that below as well. I'm working in sections again. Um, it's probably actually better to work from top to bottom on this, uh, just because of the way of the drips are, because you don't want to do the bottom and then get it perfect, and then do the top, and then have it drip onto the bottom, and then have to work the bottom again. I've kind of done it a little bit back to front here um, by starting with the bottom first. But yeah, it's just get your get your water mixture, get a cheap brush, it doesn't really matter what brush you use, and just put it on there and then get your rag or a bit of kitchen towel and just start to tap. Um, if you use a little bit too much, then you can just get your water mister and spray the furniture and then tap, or you can actually uh, tap the rag. Uh, sorry, you could actually spray the wag, uh, rag with water and then that will remove some of the paint as well. I have to tell you guys, when I actually did this, um, I did think, oh no, like, I'm going to ruin it, like, have I ruined it, have I, and, you know, I was a little bit nervous because I had this really pretty blend and all these pretty stencils, and my heart was going a little bit at this point. I mean, I know it's only paint, but at the same time, I just, you know, I didn't want to repaint the whole thing again, if I'm being totally honest, because of time. Um, so yeah, uh, so, but luckily it turns out okay in the end and I, you know, I do doubt myself sometimes, I try not to, but I think we all do, um, but thankfully it turned out great and I'm so glad that I did this because then that added to the kind of grungy old world feel that I wanted for this look and it stopped it looking like pristine and overly blendy. One thing you guys may have noticed as well is how there are actually stencils on the piece now. So there are stencils around the pulls and in the middle there with the rows. I did do a live on this and this was on the redesign with Prima page. Um, unfortunately, Facebook can get a little bit finicky sometimes and it just wouldn't let me download the live. Um, and because I'm not an admin of that page, I can't just, I can't go into the settings and download it myself. It's just one of those things. I'm really, really sorry that I can't include this in the in the lie in sorry in this tutorial, 
but it is only just like a small part of the tutorial and I'm sure a lot of you know how to just grab stencils and you know how to apply them no matter what stencil it is. However, I will link the live below um, so that you can see that and I will also link the uh, products that I used below as well because these were the silk stencils, icing paste and um, chalk paste by Prima and then there won't be any gaps in your knowledge on how I achieved this look. Okay, so this is now dry and I'm wanting to kind of make this a little bit fussy and fancy. So what I have here is the, um, I hope I'm going to pronounce this correctly, <laughs> but um, I believe it's the Tullam Keyhole Mould, they are called. And these are by Redesign with Prima. And, you know, I'm just, I'm sticking this down in the middle because you know what, there may have been a key there somewhere. Uh, all right then, another mould that I'm going to try and pronounce, and I believe this is pronounced the Tulluri Flourishes. I feel like I've not said that correctly. It will be listed below anyway, so don't worry about it if you don't have a clue what I'm saying. And yeah, so I'm just adding a bit of fuzziness to this, um, and I'm now going to paint them. And I also just want to say that I added some moulds to the sides as well. Um, the moulds I added to the side, I believe, are pronounced Montemarte Corners. I don't know. Um, okay, they're list they will be mentioned below as well. So I am starting to paint the mould now. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to paint them all the same, so I will just show you how I painted the one mould because I just recreated that for all of them. Um, I've got my original paint mix, so make sure when you paint your base that you save a little bit of your kudzu and um, dried sage mix because that's what I'm using here. I have an artist brush just to make sure that I don't smudge it um, onto you know the furniture and I'm just making sure that it's fully covered in paint. You know, it's up to you guys as well, like you could actually paint it before you put the mould on the furniture. Um, personally, I like to paint it once I've got it on there because I can always envisage how I want it to look until I actually have the, you know, the mould on the furniture and then I kind of see what colours I want to use. Um, also make sure you, you save your Palmetto um, and Evergreen mix because here I am using that. It's actually still wet and um, I just got a fan brush and gently wiped it across. All right, the moulds are completely dry now, and I've got uh, the Dixie Bell Moonshine Metallics Gold Digger. I've given the, I've made sure the furniture is totally saturated before I applied this, um, and then I am just applying it in sections again. So I am applying it to the top everywhere, and I am grabbing my water mister and spritz in, um, and then I am moving the paint along to get rid of those drips. So what I am trying to achieve here is a bit of a shimmery patina. I love my lead looks, I love my patinas, and I definitely love my gold shimmer. I like shiny things. So that's all I'm doing here, and I just want to make it look like it's had some gold on it at one point that has just kind of worn off and maybe got a little bit weathered. So once the top drawer is done, I'm moving on to the second drawer. And again, just uh, just like I did with the ragging, um, I'm working from top to bottom because I don't want to have the bottom perfect and then have the top drawer drip onto the bottom and ruin it and then have to just do the whole thing again. It's just counterproductive. So just make sure you work from top to bottom if you do this kind of look. You know, and some people love loads and loads of drips as well. Um, I do like drips to a certain extent, but I don't like the really thick lines unless I'm deliberately creating that look. In this case, I want the drips, but I want them to look a little bit more natural. Like they've kind of just, over time, kind of just started moving away. Um, I don't want it to look like I've just put water on it there and then, if, if that makes sense. What's great about this as well is that with the Moonshine Metallics is that even though you might not be able to see loads of gold, it will still leave a soft shimmer across the furniture. Alright, I've got to apologise for this guys as well. Um, one day I will do a furniture tutorial that is like perfectly edited, but I'm not quite there yet with my equipment. Um, so this here, I have just used the Art Philosophy Colour Blooms in Golden Oregano and just like I did with the Gold Digger I just sprayed this across, spritzed with water and then brushed and just made sure there were no actual loads of drips and it's just going to add to that lead look again. I will list that below because it's actually a really really nice um, spray to use. 
Now that everything's dry again, I've got my copper colour from Dixie Belle. Unfortunately, these aren't available in the UK and the patina sprays, I can't even get the patina sprays delivered to me because it's just something to do with customs, but they are available in America and you can also make them rust. If you are in the UK and not America and you can't get a hold of this paint, then there are loads of other paints out there that you can get. So I know Fusion do a really nice copper metallic. So, you know, just have a look around, see, uh, look and see what's about if you can't get a hold of this paint. So I am painting the moulds and the hardware with this. Again, I'm just getting an artist brush and then I am spritzing. So we're going for that kind of drippy, rusty look with this. Um, I absolutely love doing this with copper metallics because it just looks so pretty and it just looks so naturally worn um, and you know this along with the gold digger and the golden oregano colour bloom spray that I've used we're just adding lots of beautiful layers to this now and it's going to look genuinely old and worn. The piece is totally dry, it's been left overnight and now it's time to get our wax on. For this I use Bestang Wax in clear, grey and black. I absolutely love the waxing part. I know a lot of people hate it but I feel like this is the part you really get to kind of bring the piece together and you get to just accentuate those details in any way that you kind of fancy. So to start with, I have my Redesign with Prima brush. It's a large two inch brush and they're my favorite to use. And I have just applied clear all over. Um, and then I've got another brush, that, well, the same brush, but like the same style of brush, but another brush. Um, and I have put my gray wax on there and I am just focusing on some areas where I just want to look extra worn and extra earthy. So mainly I'm using the grey wax and I am focusing it around the pulls and maybe the moulds and again just think about where things have gotten worn and bleached. And then I've got a smaller brush for my black wax and I am focusing this on around the edges uh, to kind of provide a bit of shadowing, a bit of low light and it would just help give some depth to this piece. So I just want to let you guys know that I am working on improving these videos. Um, I'm working on getting a microphone and while I will still continue to do the voiceovers, um, I am also going to be, you know, kind of explaining. I want, I want to film myself explaining what I'm doing beforehand. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.